Hey guys, Wages Road here. It is uh, April 4th, 2020. Just now turned April 4th as I'm making this uh, video here. And um, yeah, I'm going to give you another video today. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit better, so I figured, well, I hadn't made one in a few days. I might as well uh, give you guys an extra one for today. But um, there was something that actually popped out to me, and I wanted to show it to you guys real quick um, as I was looking through some of the tools. Um, so we'll get into it here. Okay, guys, um, this is what I want to show you. Okay, we had a flare, and it wasn't that big. Okay, it's not a big deal, but I do want to show it to you guys and show you what to look for. Okay, because I, I seen it, I actually seen it here on this capture first, which is kind of odd because it, it's hard to see. It really is, unless you know what you're actually looking at. Um, and again, this flare that happened is not going to affect us hardly at all. It was, it was in the C-class at the bottom of the C-class flare. You got A, B, C, M, and X. The X-class X class flares are the ones we worry about the most. They're the strongest. They're the ones that can fry uh, lots of electronics here on the planet, destroy satellites, all that kind of stuff. And that's why I've been talking about the sunspot here for a minute because as it became, and I even said it in, my, in one of my previous videos, when it gets right in front of us, if it, ha if it happens to flare, It'll come right at us. A solar flare gets here in eight minutes. We have no no warning on this. Even if we did, there wouldn't be much we could do. If a, a CME takes three to five days to get here, a coronal mass ejection, and even if we knew that that was coming, and we do a lot of time, almost every time, but we couldn't do much, but like protect small electronics. If it was, you know, if it was gonna happen, it you know, we're talking about blowing transformers and, you know, telegraph lines got fried way back in the day during one of these events. Okay. Um, that's a big deal. You know, if that happened right now during all this stuff that's going on in our world today with the illness and all that, man, I couldn't imagine because communications would be shot. So how are you going to even fix any of this? You know what I mean? Immediately back to the dark ages. <laughs> literally um, but anyway this was this this happened to be at the bottom of a c-class flare not strong at all but it did happen okay so th this right here is um the capture before and this is when it happened okay now do you guys see what i'm talking about it takes an x shape okay most people used to think including myself that a flare they call it an x flare because of the shape. No, we're talking about the, the strength of it. That's what it means when, when they say X flare. This is not an X flare. This is actually a C flare and it didn't take the shape of a C, <laughs> okay? But I used to think the same thing when I first started, you know, trying to understand all this. Um, but you can see the little hash marks. We're kind of doing this and it does it this way too, okay? That's the reaction shape, and that's what it does. It's just the way the camera interprets that bright light. All right, so that's a flare. If you ever see that kind of a thing, and a lot of times it's even bigger, more impressive looking. Okay, it's a quick little flash. You know, it gets here in eight minutes, man. I mean, so that, that's what that looks like. Now, if you go over here again, so you can see it's not there. This is the very next capture, and it's there. And then this is the capture after. So, yeah, that's something that, that did happen. Now, I wanted to confirm that, so I started looking at other stuff, too. So I go over here to space weather, okay? And I take you guys here a lot, all right? Um, but one way to confirm that is to look at the solar x-ray flux, okay? It even has the flare levels over here on the side. So when we see spikes like this, we kind of try to, you know, see where it's at. Basically, this is trying to tell you that there was a flare, a solar flare. So you need to be looking at the sun some way and figuring out if that's actually what's happening. Now, again, if this thing was to shoot way up to there, we'd be having a much different conversation, if a conversation at all. Because depending on where that, you know, how whatever's going on there, how strong it was, communications globally would probably be down. Um, I'm just guessing, you know, but it would be an extreme X flare. Um, we've had X flares before, okay? Fried all the telegraph lines back in the day. So, 
Um, solar events can do that, guys. Uh, but anyway, geomagnetic activity is spiked at the same time. So, there you have it. You know, that, that confirms it pretty much. You know, when all those tools are saying that same thing, and you can see it visually on the SDO, um, it happened. And stopping at the SDO would have been enough for me because, it, you know, the shape it takes is very distinctive if you know what you're looking for. So if you got, you know, the next time you guys see something like that, if you're looking at these tools, which I hope you guys are, which is why I even do my channel, so you guys can at least go, know where to go to look. Make up your own mind on anything, but at least you know where to go to look. So, you know, we're looking at this, and this is where I went after I seen that. And this thing here did something kind of crazy, too. And I'm not quite sure what's going on with this. But, um, you know, th this is the SDO, and it goes through eclipse season. They know when it's going to happen, okay? So they're able to tell you, and they put dates on it. Now, this does look like an eclipse, okay? Um, but I've seen something kind of strange that caused me to, to kind of stop for a second. Okay? So we're looking at this, right? And an eclipse means a solid object went in between the sun and the satellite, right? Like the earth or the moon or something, right? Which happens like I just said. So if there's a solid object there, especially something like that, you would not be able to see anything shining through it. Okay, so we go to this. Let me back it up. This is kind of a hard thing to... Tell you what, I'm going to do this. Um, that's at 428. See the timestamp? 428. So what I'm going to do... Okay, I wasn't able to stop it quick enough. That's 424. Man, I wish this thing would quit that. Um, on it. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so that's the next capture, 432. It got dimmer. The whole the whole thing went dim. And then it went it went away, right? But in between those two captures, it was this one. Okay? You see this? If there was a solid object in front of this this satellite, why would this thing why would the sunspot be able to shine through it? It shouldn't. So that's telling me that something different's going on here. Um, whether it's a tool flaw, whatever's going on, maybe it's a double exposure type of situation that happens. Um, most likely it's a tool flaw, guys. Um, but I'm not ruling anything out because it goes completely dark and then it comes back. So I don't know what's going on. Now, I will say this too. I went and looked at the other angstroms. It's not doing it on the other angstrom. So I'm thinking it's just a tool flaw. I just thought it was really strange that it went black and that sunspot still still was there. Um, it was really, really kind of crazy looking. So, and you know, at this time, I'm thinking it's just a tool flaw. All right. There's some sort of crazy camera anomaly. Um, but, you know, like I said, I can't say that for 100%, but that is my opinion. Um, and I could be wrong on that 100%. Okay. <laughs> Um, but it does look like a tool issue with, for me anyway. Um, but I did want to show you that X flare or not X flare, <laughs> that C class flare. So that, you know, and again, um, here, here's another thing that we look at. Okay. This is electron flux. You've seen how it spiked right around the time that it, you know, happened. So that's another, another uh, data point we can look at and say, hey, yeah, you know, maybe we need to look into this a little further. Um, but again, that C-class flare, guys, it ain't going to do nothing to us, okay? It, well, if it was going to, it would have already done it anyway because it gets here in eight minutes. I wouldn't even be having this conversation with you guys if it was a huge flare, okay? Um, but I did want to show that to you guys. Um, and then, um, yeah, we're going to talk about something on the, the Comet Atlas thing here for a second, too. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you a little overview on Comet Atlas. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to give you basic information, and we'll dive into it later on deeper, okay? And um, we got some time here to talk about it, so 
Um, anyway, um, they named it C-2019-Y4 Atlas. It got its name because it was discovered by the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. And it was discovered in 2019, which is in the name, um, at the end of December, like just three months ago. Right? Orbits the sun, obviously. And they're predicting its orbital period is 6,026 years. Obviously, they've used ma math to get that. Um, you know, they, I'm not sure if they know the exact speed on this thing yet. If they don't, I'm not sure if they think it's going to speed up. I would think they think it's going to speed up because as it gets closer to the sun, naturally it should. Okay? Um, so that's what I'm thinking anyway. Now, this here. Okay? The tail of a comet guys, is what I want to talk about here real quick. The Telma Comet's made, it's, it's created by the atmosphere of the comet, and as it gets closer to the sun, it starts reacting with solar wind. That's what creates the tail. Okay? So, the coma, which is the, the comma's atmosphere. You're hearing people say that this, this thing is five times the size of Jupiter, half the size of the sun. Well, they're 100% they're correct if they're talking about the atmosphere of this thing. It's the atmosphere that's that big, guys. Not the core of this. The atmosphere is. Okay? So please understand that. I don't want people to be misunderstanding that because we got to have two different conversations if we're talking about an atmosphere that big or if we're talking about an object that, that, that that's big. Okay? Because most people, when you tell them something's that big, they're going to immediately think that it's the actual object itself. So people that are talking about this subject really need to, you know, push that point home. You know, drive that point home, man. Because they need to understand that. If not, they might get fearful. I'm just saying. Okay, they might, it might scare them a little bit. If not a lot. Okay. And, you know, I'm not going to go too much more into that kind of a thing because... I got a lot of opinions on what's going to happen, what could happen. Is any of this have to do with what's going on in our world today? Is it, I mean, all that stuff comes to our minds, right? But I'm not going to go out there and say that this is absolutely 100% going to happen on this day or in this time frame. Because there's absolutely no way any of us can know that. Not 100%. And I don't want to get somebody on such a grand scale some, you know, some bad information there or a bad opinion on something and for them to take it so seriously that they change their life and then nothing happens and then it's like man where do you go from there right now you affected somebody's life and not only did you do that but you've ruined your credibility so that you know you'll never hear me put a date on things guys i don't i've said that since the beginning I've had a lot of people tell me a whole lot of different dates, and I can tell you right now that 99% of the time, they were wrong. We're all still here, right? So please keep in mind that people out there saying really, really bad stuff's going to happen with this, that you really need to seriously question that. You need to question how they can even come up with that kind of a thing in three months when they don't have the, the, the right data anyway. They don't have the data that the government or whoever, whatever agencies got on this thing. It is just an educated guess and speculation, like I said before. So I'm not going to ever come out and give you guys a date on stuff like that. And I would really hope that others would refrain from doing that too. Because the end of it, what do you gain from it? Not much. Just saying, guys. So, um, yeah, we'll dig into this conversation a little bit more later on. But um, also, um, guys, uh, Mike and Cindy over at Evolutionary Energy Arts, they, uh, they demonetized their channel. I forgot to mention this in my last video. Um, yeah, it's happening a lot right now on, on YouTube. So if you guys could, go over and sub up to their second, their backup channel. It's EE -E Arts. Um, so, yeah. Go do that, you know, because they do some really good live live streams and stuff over there and post videos. And they're still they still got their um, main channel, but you know he uh, Mike was telling me that he can appeal it in like 30 days, and I'm sure there's a process there and everything like that. But 
until then, please go over to their secondary channel and check them out. I mean, it, it, it's, yeah, you guys will, you'll thank me when you go there. And there's a lot of love going on over there, and it's, it's all positive most of the time, okay? And when the negative conversations need to be had, they'll be had. But they're done in such a way that, yeah, you don't, you don't, fear, fear, you don't feel fear when they're talking about stuff, okay? They're just trying to give you information and be as positive as they can. And it's exactly what I've strived to do. Sometimes I've succeeded, sometimes I haven't, but that's what I try to do too. But um, yeah, also, um, yeah, go over and check out uh, Scott's Teespring too. He's got some pretty cool shirts over there right now. Um, obviously, stuff to do with what's going on with our global illness is what I'm going to call it. Um, there's some pretty cool shirts he's designed over there. Go check them out. But um, I'll, leave a, I'll leave a link to that too. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, hopefully I'll come at you with another video uh, later on this evening, maybe, um, tomorrow sometime. So, um, God bless. Yeshua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.